Hi, this is M, and today I'm going to do a little pressed flower demonstration. I'll show you how I press a couple flowers that I'm going to go and get from the garden. Um, all we need to do this is a pair of snips when we're out in the yard. These are my dirty snips that I only use for cutting flowers. A uh, pair of tweezers, which I won't need now for going and getting things out of the garden, but I do always have some handy. So I'll set them aside. Something to protect the surface of my table. And then something to put your flowers in. I always put my flowers in a paper sandwich. So I've got a supply of paper here. This is just copy paper and some other brown paper. And then something to put them in, which is either a non-glossy book magazine or some other method. And then some paper uh, and then some cardboard spacers. And I just did a video that I either have already posted or will be posting that goes into more detail about um, ways to press flowers using store-bought purchase press or making your own press or using paper um, spacers, cardboard paper spacers. And so that'll give you ideas of uh, different ways to press flowers. So be on the lookout for that. But for me, uh, since I'm doing bulk pressing today, I'll be using my spacers and my magazines. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, then let's get started. This page is going to be Queen Anne's lace and oregano. And I'll talk a few moments about the plants. Uh, the oregano I do in both uh, before the flowers are open and they get this real purplish color, and the color lasts for a really long time. And then when the flowers open up, this is how they get. And so I'll put, press them both ways, and so today I will be doing them both. And then the other thing that I'm gonna be doing is Queen Anne's lace, which I just love. And when they first start to blossom, the Heads are really big. Here's, here's an example of a big head. Let's see how big this is. And then as the season wears on, the big heads get done blooming. Then, then they start to get smaller. And then later in the season, they'll get even smaller still. And so that way you can get different sizes. I typically press them open face, and then before I press them, I will, here's the stem, I will snip the back of the stem off. And because they're rather, um, I guess, sappy or resinous in the back, I usually have a paper towel handy. And I don't know if you can see, but they're kind of sappy. And so I will just push down on the paper towel, see, before I put them in the book just to get a little of that excess sap off. They're real easy to press otherwise than that. Just set them on the, on the page. I just uh, set them down flat. And since I already, out in the garden, I had already um, took, take, I already took the stem out and when I was out in the garden, most of these other ones that I have in what I call my carry-all, I don't have to do anything more to them except put them in the book. Now to fill in a couple of these spots that are left, I will go ahead and take my oregano and just cut some of these smaller pieces off and then use them to fill in. just so I'm not leaving a bunch of wasted space there. Okay, I think I'll just do one more small little piece. And this is ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is, this is just copier paper, I'm going to stick it in the spine. Push this back, and then I'm just going to roll over. 
And I'll put a piece of chipboard and then cardboard. And set this off to the side. And then put another piece of chipboard here. This will go on top after I do the next pile. This with the book on top will go on top of what I just did, the layer that we just did. So now we're ready for another layer of the same thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and do these two uh, botanicals and then we'll move on to something else. For this page I'm going to start out with the oregano because I want it to take up a larger portion of the page and that leaf was um, was mangled, that's why I took that one leaf off. I'll leave the rest of the leaves on. But I do check to see if they look blemish-free. Um, I'm just kind of thinking in my mind arranging it. I'm going to leave this one intact so it kind of looks like how it grows botanically. And then I'll cut this one off. Leave this, these top parts together. And when I roll the book, I kind of want to roll them flat. That's why I'm facing them this way. Which is the other thing I like about doing them in the book is because... Now, any loose flowers that are spent, like some of these have some dried flowers on there that are dried, meaning they've already gone away. So I'm just cleaning it off. See, like that's a, a dry, dried piece of flour. So I'm cleaning that off. Okay. So I'm just going to continue this page, <clears throat> filling up with these oregano florets. Flying scissors there. <clears throat> and as I start running out of room, then I cut them down a little bit more for smaller pieces. And I'll cut this stem down a little bit more, put that in here. Go in with some smaller stuff. And then I'll also put um, some leaves. Say, for example, there's a perfectly good leaf. Let's tuck some leaves in there. Just to help fill up the page. Okay, I'm running out of room now, so I'll probably call that good. Get a piece of paper. And roll over the book. Try to make sure nothing's overlapping. If I have any arranging I want to do where I want to have things facing or sitting a certain way, like I want this down, that's where my tweezers sometimes will come in handy. If it's small stuff, this is big enough I can use my fingers. I want to fan that out a little bit. I want this to be fanned out a little bit. So I'm going to kind of work it as I close the book. And then that one's done. This is a certain kind of Coreopsis, and I literally just picked these about 30 seconds ago. And this is how they looked in the yard. They're already getting wilty. It's the, the middle of the day, and it's not like they n need water. A lot of times I notice plants will just wilt in the midday sun, but I need to get them planted, or excuse me, pressed. And so I'm just going to hope that they do good. And if they don't press good in whole, I know some of the petals will turn out and I can use them for petal art. 
but these are absolutely gorgeous. I've already pressed them. I know they hold their color well, and uh, they're definitely... Coreopsis hold their, in general, hold their color. And even though they have the center, this, this the center is not so hard that you can't press them whole. So I will take the uh, stem off at the back. I generally place these face down, and I'm when they're they're already limp. You can see how limp they are, and when they're this, when they come out of the garden like this, you want to get them into the press as soon as possible. So I went out and specifically pressed these. And I'm not waiting around for anything else. These are going right into the press. And uh, as quickly as possible. So, so that's how that goes. All right, I'll put them in the book and we'll do something else. Now that I pressed those coreopsis that I just showed you, I want to get pressure on them as soon as possible. So what I've done so far, um, this is the uh, Queen Anne's and some of those oregano and then the, uh, the coreopsis uh, I, that I've done so far. I'm going to go ahead and get these under pressure. I'm going to put a board on top so that it's rigid because I'm not going to be using books. I'm going to be using cement blocks. I'm going to put a board on top. For rigidity and then I'm going to put a cement block on top uh, while I do another round of pressing uh, and then when I'm all done doing the day's pressing they'll end up with two cement blocks. I use two cement blocks as weight on top during the cycle. It's so hot out there and things are wilting so fast I'm not bringing too much in at a time. Uh, for this round I've got start with zinnia And here's, they're too thick to press in their, um, in this form. So what I do is I pull the blossom or the petals off to try to get them attached with this green stuff, which I didn't do a very good job, or, yeah, the green, green stuff. So let me see if I can dismantle it better and, and, uh, and not, tear them apart, so I'll try to tear them lower down on the stem. So that's what I do with the zinnia. This is a smaller one. I, pull, I took a couple of petals off of a different zinnia, and you can see, let me show you how beautiful these, blossom, these uh, petals are. Look at the color on those, and they hold their color well. That's, that's a bigger petaled zinnia and a smaller petaled zinnia, but I didn't want to pick the whole head off. But you can see just how, how beautiful they are. And so that's what I do with zinnia. And then for the uh, pansy, I just I snip the back off. And you don't want to snip it too far down, it'll fall apart. So I do it about like that. And then I'll press the stems separately. And so that's how I'll do a pansy. And then this was, uh, I think I talked about it in the garden blog, a hydrangea that I bought for my husband. And it was opening pink. And I thought, ooh, I'll put extra lime on it, and hopefully it'll stay pink. But uh, you can see it's starting to turn blue. And you can see I just picked it that it's already wilty in the midday sun. And typically, if I do press hydrangeas, the, about the thickest I'll ever press them is in a clump like that. I don't press the whole head because it's just, it, it just, I don't know, I don't like the way it looks. You could certainly try to do that. And what I'll usually do is press the individual florets. So I'll just snip them off the back. And then this is, this is, this is almost impossible when it gets to be this limp. But that just, just, this just should give you an idea what I do. I'll put it face down and I'll press it open face. So I'm not sure how many I'll get off of these. I'll probably have to wait till later in the day when it's not so hot or earlier in the morning to press. But anyway, 
I just want to talk about hydrangeas. So I'll get a couple off of those, but it probably won't be very many. And then in the garden, I talked about how I just love these. But I wasn't sure what they were. Well, I did, and I couldn't find the tag. Well, there was a tag. I just didn't see it. And this is what it is. It is a uh, Calibracoa. Again, uh, you've heard me say I'm not a good pronunciator. Other people know better, uh, might know the pronunciation can help with that. So that's why I'm showing you the tag so that you can see what it is. There's just beautiful. So, good night kiss. Cabaret, good night kiss. And what, how I'm going to press that is I'm just going to press it this way and I'm going to fold these two petals down. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the stem on. The other way that you can press it, and I've already pressed these before and I know it works, is you can um, cut the back off. The only thing is that when you do that, you're going to get a hole. See the hole in it? And I was thinking, you know, in order to be artistic, I mean, you certainly can be, do artistic things. I was thinking if I could find uh, some other plant that had a nice small center, once these are flat, I could overlay and put another plant center on top and uh, kind of cover up that hole and do something more arti artistic there. Or what you could do is you could use some sort of puff paint or some sort something that, that mounds, or you could use a rhinestone or something that's sort of flat, but it could have a little dimension, and put that in the center and give it like a, a bling center, so to speak. So just because it uh, has a hole in it doesn't mean that it isn't good to use. It's just, just letting you know that if you do clip something like this off, something that's got more of a trumpet shape, that um, to press it flat, that you might very well have a hole in it, which is fine. And so I'll probably do them both ways. Let's see, what else do we have in the basket here? We didn't talk, oh, the other thing we didn't talk about is Heather. Um, now, Heather is such that you can press it like this, which I, I am going to press a few like that. But the other thing that I do, because I love using he Heather in individual uh, mini arrangements, is I will take and just strip them off the stem and then scatter them around. And then what that does is it presses them super flat. You get these pieces that are really good for mini arrangements. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'll, once I get this page done, I'll, I'll show you the page. I wanted to show uh, on this one how I pulled it in the book. I tend to there's something I'm going to do special about this. Let me bring this over. This is why I use the spine of the book. Let me get a different, different section of the book so I can get this all the way back. Okay, so I'm trying to get it in the as far back as it'll go in the spine. I'm going to move my piece of white paper now because I had it in the wrong spot. Tuck that in. This is where I'll probably use my tweezers if I can find them. I don't know where I put them. Well, I happen to have another another pair on the shelf. Oh, here they are. Okay. And, <coughs> excuse me. I have a specific way that I want these to lay because I left some greenery on there. And so I want to show you how I use the roll to manipulate uh, what I'm trying to accomplish. So I want this to, hopefully you can see, maybe I can, maybe I can bring the camera closer. Let me see if this will work. Okay, I'll move this out of the way. All right, 
So what I'm trying to do is I want this to lay flat. I want these green parts out of the way. And so hopefully you can see me capture it. I'm going to roll the book so that it rolls it. See how it's starting to roll that flat? So that it rolls that flat and as it catches that so it doesn't move, I'm going to use my tweezers and get these out of the way. Like that. So that when it presses the green part isn't infringing upon the flower part. Um, I don't know, maybe it makes it look contrived, but that's the way I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of a, I don't know what you'd call it. So now I'm getting to another one. So this next one I'm going to do, same thing. See how it's going to roll it? It's going to roll into it and roll it flat. But I don't want these things to be in the way. So I'm going to... I want to still keep the green part on there to have it look more botanical. But I, um, I just don't want it to infringe upon the petals. Now I'm coming to another one over here which is off camera and it's already kind of laying flat you can see so this one will be easy to start it roll it this one's going to end up starting I'm going to roll and then as it catches I can move the tweezers and move that back hopefully you can see up there at the top move that out of the way now this one is catching I can move this one out of the way and I can move, oh, that's part of the stem, so I'll move that one back. Then we'll get here, catch this. And I'll catch it like that. I have to move this one out of the way. Put that down. This one I don't have to do anything to. This one I'm going to face it so that I can, I can get it how I want it. Roll. Make sure these are out of the way. There. It, it takes a little time to do that, but uh, it's worth it in my opinion. You know, how much time you do, if you, if, you, if you do your arranging now while you're getting ready to press them, then you're done. And uh, then you can decide once they're pressed, do you want to take the green part off and use it individually or don't you? But at least the petals, theoretically, by doing it that way, aren't going to be all mangled or uh, imprinted with the greenery that we moved out of the way in case we want the petals to be fairly uh, flat and unblemished. So that's, that's why I do that. So those are some of the things that I think about when I'm closing the book up. So here's a page of, with some zinnia petals and those heather florets that are now ready to go into the pressing book. Well, I was out in the yard getting some celosia, which is these guys. Um, they were right next to some aquaclinium, and so I wanted to show them to you. I'm not going to press these. You can press them. They're a straw flower. There, see if you can see if you can hear this. Can you hear that? They're already dry. That's why they call them a straw flower. But I just want to show you how beautiful aquaclinium is. And I've got several different colors. There's the darker pink, and the lighter pink, and the white. And what I do for those is I just simply hang them upside down, put a rubber band on them, and then I take a paper clip that I've opened up to make it look like one of those Christmas hangers for ornaments, and then I just hang them upside down to dry. And then I use them in dried flower arrangements. And basically, they what you see now is pretty much what they look like after they're dry. The other thing that I like to dry is, let me grab some here, is some straw flowers. I've got several different colors, but these are already been picked to dry. I have a little area over here for them. 
So anyway, it has nothing to do with what we're pressing, but I just thought I'd show you that since I was right next to them in the yard. So this is Celosia, and because most of the work that I, that I do is small, uh, cards, tags, jewelry, <clears throat> bookmarks, things like that, uh, I really like them when they're... Let me bring some up closer to the camera. I really like them when they're smaller, the smaller plumes. And so, consequently, what happens on these larger plumes is I will fan them out so that then I can extract the smaller plumes when I'm working. And so that's what you're going to see me doing here. Rather than picking all these individual ones off at this point and taking my time to do that I, because these fan so easy, I'm just going to fan it out. And then I will pick up what I need um, as I need it. And so that's, that's what we'll do there. And then these I just just press like this. And then while I was out there, I was also near a bachelor button. And these, uh, you can try pressing them. This is the annual form of bachelor button. But usually what I do, because I use them in miniature arrangements, is I just take and strip the petals out of their sheath and then distribute them around and then use the individual uh, pieces as accents and uh, backgrounds in both regular arrangements and miniature arrangements. So that's what I do with, uh, with those. So I'm going to finish up the page and put it in the press and then, and then I'll be ready to go. I'm almost out of battery life, so that'll be it for this session. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, take a look out in your garden and, and see what you've done. Also be on the lookout for either I posted or will be posting um, some more videos on different things that can, you can use to press your flowers, different ways to press your flowers from a microwave press to a traditional something that you can you know buy at the store as well as uh, how to kind of make shift some of your own. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, have fun, enjoy the journey, and thank you for tuning in and subscribing, and have a wonderful day.